Well, hello, Internet. If you have been watching my HTML tutorials, you're probably asking yourself, when is he going to talk about cascading style sheets already? Well, today is the day. I'm going to do something that's kind of daunting, but I think I figured it out. I'm going to completely go over every feature available with cascading style sheets. What you have to understand is when HTML was merged with XML to become XHTML, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, that means you didn't watch my HTML tutorials, which are available right here. Well, when that occurred, CSS took off because now we were able to create our own tags and the possibilities became endless. You define how you want to add style to your pages in regards to cascading style sheets in one of two ways. You either embed the CSS styling directly into the web page itself, like this, right in your heading section, right after the title. You would just start defining all the styles you want to use on that web page. And you would do that by defining a tag you want to change and then how you want to change it. So in this case, I'm defining I want all of my H1 tags to be of the type Arial and by default sans serif. And I want all my text color to be purple. And I'll be explaining all these in a little bit. And then you want to close the bracket and close the style sheet. And that is how it's done if you want to embed. However, if you would want to link to an outside style sheet, right in the same exact part, right after the title tags are defined, you want to put this link right here. This part and this part tells the browser that a style sheet is available that you want it to go get and style your page with at this location right here. Now why is it preferable to link to an outside style sheet? It's simple. Let's say you make a website and it's 300 pages and believe me, a website that's any good at all can easily become that big. And the client says to you, hey, I like what you did with the header tags, but I would prefer that that color be changed to red. Well, if you, all your style sheets are embedded, you're going to have to change that style on 300 pages. That is why people link outside to style sheets, just so you know. So, how do changes in one tag affect all of the other? Here I'm going to explain the way cascading works. Let's say that you changed your body tag. That is the biggest tag you have available in regards to changing your content. Why? Because all your content lies in the body tag. Then, those changes made in the body tag are going to filter down to all of your paragraph tags. And then, all those changes are going to filter down into, say, your heading tags. And all of the inline statements, again, if you don't know what inline means, watch the HTML tutorial, but would not change the image. Why is that? Because the image does not have any text in it. So and that's basically the cascading part. And whenever you're defining all of your styles, you want to start with the biggest tag available, normally your body tag, and then work your way down to the paragraph tags, and then down into your headers, and then down into all of your inline statements. And you can see here what I'm doing is I'm defining for all paragraphs to be of this font family, then this font size to be the default, and then all the text to be color purple. Here I'm defining these individual tags to change the color from purple to black. And down here I'm changing that all my anchors or links should be of this different font family. So that's what's going on there. There is only one exclusion to this rule. Block element definitions affect all inline elements, but not block elements that reside in them. Example. Here we're going to change the body text color to black. That's going to filter down to all of the paragraphs because body is most powerful. When we change the paragraph tag text color to purple, that filters down to your italic tag and your bold tag, but not your two header tags here. And why is that? That is because header tags are block elements. When you make a change in a block element, and another block element resides in that block element, it will not affect these block elements down here. So you're saying to yourself, well, what is a block element? I forgot. Here are all of your block elements. Block quotes, divs, definition lists, forms, header tags, horizontal rule, ordered list, paragraphs, tables, and unordered list. Now I'll describe how to make multiple versions of one tag. Let's say a customer wants an H1 tag to be different colors depending on what title 
they are being used on. Is that possible? Most definitely, you just have to define multiple classes for each header. And I'm going to show you in a second an even quicker way to do that. But let's keep it simple. Okay, you have your generic header tag right here. And for all of your header tags, other than these ones, we're going to define the font family as Times New Roman down to Sarah. And we're going to define the, the default font size be 14 pixels. This is a comment, by the way. <laughs> and here we're going to close off my HTML or my H1 tag definition. And I'm going to make some custom tags right here being header tags dot purple. Anything that I call in a tag format, instead of typing H1, I type in H1 dot purple. Those header tags are going to be purple. And if I type in H1 dot green instead of the normal H1, all that text is going to show up green. Now I'm going to show you how to, to create a default generic class that can be applied to any tag. All you simply do is remove the tag. Up here I have H1. Down here I'm just going to simply define my class with a period and then whatever I want the name to be. As you can see here, this is the old way of doing it, where I would define the header tag, class, and whatever the name of the class was I defined up here. What I'm going to do now is create a custom class. Then how do I add this custom class to any other element? Simple. In the case of H1, I would do H1 class equals and then put in Purple Serif, which is the custom name for my class that I defined right here. And that's basically all we're going to cover today, but a ton more is coming. As you can see here, I'm going to define for you, give examples of, and example tags and information for every single property within Cascading Style Sheets. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Till next time.